Hello friends from all around the world. Greetings from N Generation Project. Now before we get to today's restream episode, Mike from Council of Time, the Helmet of Salvation, very shortly. This is a video rebroadcast of the daily Council of Time podcast shows number 24. These podcasts are of spiritual wisdom from well-renowned and respected Mike from the Council of Time. Though we hold COT in the highest esteem, we have no affiliation with the Council of Time, its members, or its only official website, councilloftime.com. We have no authority to speak on their behalf apart from disseminating God's word from their very popular website, Council of Time. We hope these podcasts inspire you in the word of God and pursue truth and knowledge, something our project holds at the center of our project. If you would like a better idea about the Council of Time and their beliefs, policies, and procedures, or would like to make a donation to them, please visit their only official website at the links provided in the description below. Thank you again for clicking on this video as a small channel and project. We appreciate every single individual who has shared their time with us. Blessings. Now sit back and relax. Enjoy this episode number 24. Mike from Council of Time. The Helmet of Salvation. What about now? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, we got it. I'm sorry. You guys weren't then, you know, linked in there. Hey, but it, it was not the mute this time. No. It was a simple ONOFF button. You guys know what that is, right? The ONO, the ONOFF button. It's on every single device. On and off button. It was off. Now it's on. Okay. Again, good to be with you guys here tonight. It's good to be with you guys. And before anybody asks, right, because tonight uh, we, sh we should do a Q and a I, because a lot of people are left at a blank because we really should do a Q and a before we start talking about things tomorrow, right, to get everybody up to speed uh, on anything and everything. And before you guys ask, all right, because I know somebody's going to. Some of you guys are pretty sharp. Last night when I was talking to Pastor Paul, and I mentioned uh, Putin, right, how he takes care of his people unless, unless you are, you know, running for president or something like that. And then this morning that guy is dead, right, his biggest uh, opposer, right. I'm, I know about that. You guys are sharp. A lot of people caught that last night. That was funny because the emails, at the top of the email, it said, uh, you did that again, did what again? You know what? In truth, let me tell you what that is. I'll tell you what that is. When uh, sometimes when you're not thinking about your own stuff, right, uh, you start talking about different things. You do. You, you well, you, uh, Let's say it's an all of you have it. You really do. All of you have it. The problem is a lot of us, we think about what we're going to say more than, you know, what's being said. Right? So when you let go of that, when you let go of what you're going to say and your mind is focused on accommodating somebody else, well, then you're going to have things like that happen all the time. So, but there are people out there keeping track and now they, you know, but, but it's just one of those things. It really is. One of those things, you'll have a inclination, kind of like, um, kind of like this, kind of like the incident or the headlines, right? For example, early this morning, I saw a headline that's not a headline. I didn't look at it on a computer or anything. It just keeps popping into my head, right? Things like that happen. They do, especially when you're worried about other folks. One of my greatest concerns uh, with the U.S. are these weather phenomena. Right? They're going to take their toll. And so when you start, before you look into different things, and you, you begin to see uh, a trend. It's going to go somewhere. Right? Plus, the Lord will give you things. You guys know I don't like to sleep um, because I always dream. I can't. It, it's rough. But to give an example, this guy was in a dream. This is in a dream. This guy was actually he had a fish, but it looked like a... It was an ugly fish. It was a baby. And he got frightened because it, it started to rain. And when it rains, he said, two of the dams are going to break. And, and I perceived that more of those fish were inside that dam. But I saw something else. 
the people, now you guys may not believe this, but the people who are to undergo some of the most horrific things you've ever seen, right? And they actually experience this. The horrific things. Uh, these are people that have said no to Christ. A lot of people out there who have said no to Jesus Christ. They have said absolute no. They've said no. And so when a person says no, they put themselves, when they really say no, I mean really say no. These guys really said no. And they're going to undergo some things. They're going to begin to undergo things that look cruel. But you may not know they said no. There are people preaching right now who have said no to Christ. Right? They have. For example, if a, if a person... Take the Trinity, right? A lot of you guys know what the Trinity is. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It has been taught to everybody. You read the Bible, you find out something. God is first, right? God had a mind, you could say, to create things, and he spoke in his word. Is Jesus, correct? The essence of our Father is his spirit which is poured out on all flesh. So in truth, everything is the Father. Everything is. Jesus is the Word of God. So anything Jesus speaks comes directly from the mind of God. Think about that, right? What we, these instant corrections we received comes from the, the perfectness I'll now just use, I know it's not a word, but it fits. The perfectness of our Father and His justness in all things. So we are convicted daily. We are. We are convicted daily. I don't know about you, but I couldn't make it without the conviction. See, if conviction ever left, all of us would take the expedient way to... Uh, destination, not necessarily the righteous way. It is conviction that causes you to back up and stop and slow down and consider, right? Conviction, without conviction, I think all of us would have a good idea of what we would be, especially those of you who are mature enough to understand what you've done in life, how you did those things, and if not for the Lord's intervention and his conviction, what would have happened, right? We know for a fact it's, it's, it's those heavy things in life that open our eyes to the sufferings of others. We would not understand how somebody else suffers if we did not suffer ourselves. Because we have suffered, we are sensitive to somebody else's suffering, which causes us to act differently to those people. All of that comes through the orchestrated lives, right? The, the, the doings of our Father. Nothing in your life is happenstance. Everything is utilized to raise you. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome, isn't it? And we know this. But without that, we would be awful. We would be awful. We would have given up. We would. Not one of us would have the strength to go forward under our own steam. We would not. We would have deviated because all of us have been stopped by a situation. God humbles us through sickness, through pain, right, through troubles. We are humbled that way. If it does not humble us, we think we're right in everything to the point where we will fight and argue and hurt other people just to prove our point. Don't we do that? So when the Lord intervenes and we start suffering, well, then guess what? There goes your arguing. There goes your strength, right, to keep up, uh, you know, your side of things to win over somebody else. And you don't even know if you're right or not. You start thinking about the other person, what's worth it, what's not. You start seeing things differently. All of this because of our Father's intervention and our lives, his guidance. His trials and tribulations we have, they are good. If God did not do that, everybody would be awful. Everybody would. In a person's daily speech, they speak about their own pain with every sentence 
they form. Do you know that? Do you know that? They speak from a perspective of their own pain, of their own trials, of their own difficulties, of their own fears. Now, if you learn how to listen, you'll know everybody very well. Because every, everything you formulate is going to be based upon your past, your environment, things you've gone through, what you've overcome and what you've fallen victim to, all sorts of things. And we speak those things every single day, right? We defend those areas of life that hurt. We go forward in those areas of life we hope to do. All that comes out in every phrase a person speaks. Every single phrase. Right? Deeper discussion on those things later. That's a, that's a simple way to recognize who you're talking to. Some of you guys are trained in that. You have to utilize that when you go overseas and talk to your counterparts. And you have to survive in a foreign country without help. You have to remain invisible, mingling with the people, collect, gather as much information as possible, right? Those are tactics. And they just happen to be true. Where do you think people get these tactics from? Uh, one, one manual called it Joshua's Guidance. Interesting thing, huh? The Bible. Yes. A lot of things come from the Bible. These guys back in the past, they had time to think, consult. Today, the world moves quick. You have less and less time to reflect on things. Back then, they reflected on quite a bit. They analyzed their own lives. They extracted wisdom out of what they lived through. Right? They don't, people don't, they don't do that today. They assume that they're right. They assume they're wrong. They keep moving forward. They don't reflect enough. Because the world is much too uh, demanding for that, right? Unhealthy, as you could say, unhealthy. Anyway, all that is within all of you. It's not something special or extraordinary. It is something normal. In fact, for those of you who believe in Christ, there are quite a few things that are normal. It should be normal. And when you decide who you believe, well then, Things will come forward. I mean, lots of things. You'll have everything you need to go forward in life. Not only go forward, but to make a difference with everything you touch, everything you touch, everything you attempt to do, right? Some sort of good will come of it. The opposite is true for those who reject the guidance of the Most High. Everything they touch crumbles. It destroys, it hurts, it maims, it kills. They leave a trail of carnage with every relationship and everything they attempt to do. All right, now, I'm waiting on the stream. Actually, it's starting now. It's starting to come into play. We're going to have a Q&A. We're going to do that today. Weather is coming for California, northern California. You guys should expect at least 13 inches of rain in certain parts of Northern California. And it's not going to end there. You guys have, uh, you're, you're, we're, we're praying for you. We are praying for you. Down in parts in, in uh, Southern California, you can expect rain uh, anywhere from one or three to, I'll say three to five inches of rain. Right? You have a very condensed system coming down. And uh, an interesting fact Scientists, they understand parts of what's happening. 30% of what's happening with the weather phenomena, they have no clue about, and that scares them. Do you know that? 30%. Last year was the hottest year on record. This year is going to beat that. Expect damaging systems, the formation of systems. And I'll say it again, weather will be or become the enemy of mankind. Somebody said, do spirits choose women differently than men when attacking based on the sensitive parts of women? No. Here's what happens. You ready? Women and men are different. God made a woman so that she is very sensitive 
to the flesh. Why did he do that? So that she could discern the call of a child or the needs of a child. She can do that by voice, by feeling, by all sorts, right, of, of, of nuances. A man cannot do that unless he chooses to do that. But a woman is meant to feel. Now, can I, without you guys getting offended, could I go into something that you need to know? Did anybody ever figure out why Paul said a woman should not instruct a man in the Word of God? Anybody? Did anybody ever figure out why in the world God was saying that, uh, or, or the apostles would say a woman is not a priest? Why would that be in the heritage of any people in the first place. Why? Why? Anybody know? Enter with all of us. All of us have emotions. Anybody? All of us have emotions. All of us do. All of us have emotions. It can't be that. Anybody? See, we should have listened to our Father. We should have. But most importantly, we should have learned from our Father. Normally, when the Lord says, don't do a thing, if you only see the Word of God, He'll tell people not to do something that seems unusual, right? But then later on, He'll explain why He said that. People will learn a bit and overcome it, and it's no longer necessary. Hmm? All right, here we go. When a man preaches or is instructing other people. He's speaking, right, instructively based on the instructions he received, no matter how he feels, no matter what he's gone through or experienced. He's going to give those instructions according to how they were given to him, period. Because women, listen, women are tuned to hear everything. And all too often, in conversation, sometimes, they cannot discern what is speaking to them. Women have a phrase. They'll say, something told me to, to uh, just go here. They'll say, I have a strong feeling to do this. They'll sit down, they'll say, this doesn't feel right. I have to do this. But what is that based on? Anybody? What is that based on? Goes back to the garden. Who did Satan talk to? Did he talk to Adam? Did any devil, did any devil conversate with Job? Did Satan talk to Job? Or did Job undergo conditions? Hmm? that he attributed Satan and his friends, attributed to Satan, and Job, of course, attributed some of that to his own sin, things of, things of that nature. The truth is, right, a man will execute things because he can see the bottom line. He gets instruction. It does not matter what he hears from the left or to the right or what his thoughts are saying or what his fear level is. That doesn't matter especially when handling the Word of God, right? For real men, that is, I say that softly, softly, very softly. And what I mean by real men, those who will carry out the instruction of the living God, eventually, right? Women, on the other hand, don't get offended, but women have an ability to hear things in the spiritual realm. Let me give you an example of that. Why do women show up in places to catch people at fault? Hmm? Anybody? Come on now. Help me out. Help me out. Because they're nudged. They have a nudge to do this and to do that. And most often, right, they don't check out the sources. Let me give you a hint, ladies. Don't get offended. God will never, ever point anything out to you that will have you accuse somebody else of anything. God will never do that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
See how that works? Uh Uh-oh. God doesn't do that. That means you have an extraordinary ability. You just have to get beyond your own eyes to utilize it. That's all. You have to have your feelings or all is lost. You have to. You have to have your emotions or all is lost. But your life requires absolute obedience unto the Most High with no slippage. Do you know that? You are the backbone of humanity and you don't even know it. Based upon you, you can bend this world in a good way or a bad way. Hmm? See, a man has strength, right? A man is like a ship. He really is. With a hand on the rudder, you can steer that boat anywhere. The man has the power to go right through the waters. But you can steer that large vessel with one hand. One hand. But you don't realize that. Do you know why? Do you know why you don't realize what you're doing? Hmm? Because you cannot see who you are. If you could see who you are, you'd be vain. You would turn inwardly. You would cut everybody else off. You would find things to be a nuisance to your life. You would seize power and control. You would. Because you would see the other things. It's non-essential. You become a hardened individual who would project all emotions. When handling the word of God, a woman will speak according to experience. Do you know that? In other words, say somebody hurts somebody. Right? Somebody's been hurt. Ladies, you can, you can say yay or nay on this. But if you've ever been hurt, if you ever teach the word of God to anybody, talk about the word of God to anybody, but you've been hurt by someone, then you're going to start teaching out of the Word of God based upon that hurt, which means you're going to start teaching everybody how to guard themselves from hurt. That's not God's instruction. God never teaches us how to run. Now, I'm giving you this example to let you know two things. The first thing is you can absolutely, absolutely, absolutely utilize everything you've gone through for things you do in your day-to-day life. But God has given a warning, both to men and women. Women, the warning to you, right, is to make sure you're submitting to the Most High. Why? Because you're going to hear not only the Most High in your head, but other things too. Why is that? Because spirits operate through flesh, or they can't do anything. Correct? And when they go through flesh, they're going to go through a multitude of people. And you have to be able to feel all those people. So you have high discernment. You know when someone is trying to get over on you. You just can't find the validated cause behind it. You already know when somebody's lying to you. You already know these things. The problem is this. You start hearing so much. Sometimes you don't know what to listen to, and you get overwhelmed. That's why women get overwhelmed emotionally. That's why they have a balancer called estrogen. Because if they don't have that estrogen, they're instantly overwhelmed by too much. And they cannot function. Do you know that? They can't function. That means God has placed you in this earth to truly be a womb. And if you think it's only a child, you've messed up. A seed does nothing by itself. It requires a womb. But let me tell you something. Nephilim came from a woman's womb. That means you can take in many different seeds and give birth to many different things. You have to be careful above everything on this earth. You do. Because you can give birth to things you never thought of. You can destroy. And you'll have no idea you're doing it. God called women. Specifically, Speci- listen, that word submission, see a lot of people see that word, I'm not submitting to anybody. Then you're operating outside of your own design. If you don't submit, you're going to boil over and blow up. If you submit, you can find joy. Let me ask you guys something. Of a woman, what pleases the most high from a woman? How is God pleased of women? 
Anybody care to tell me? Anybody? I'm talking about the word. I'm not talking about philosophy. I'm not talking about some theory. Give me the word. How was God pleased with a woman? Come on now, bring it to me. We want to know about how the Most High is pleased with a woman, and then why? If she does what? Oh, oh, somebody said it. Governing her children. That's a summary. That's a summary, but yes. Yes. God is pleased with a woman when what God has given that woman is responsible over. That takes submission to the most high. Everybody cannot be a mother. Just telling you that. Everybody cannot be a mother. And the Lord is very specific. You bring joy to the most high when you nurture those children. What do you think is such a built-in strong thing to you to nurture something? You've got to nurture something. Now, what about guys? How do we please the Lord, gentlemen? How do you please the Lord, gentlemen? According to the word of God, how can a man be pleasing unto the Most High? Hmm? Anybody? Anybody? One word. E. Peter, thank you. Obedience. There it is. Obedience. That means if you're, if, and listen, you can do everything else. You will not please the Most High outside of obedience. So we have obedience, and then we have the woman doing what? Being a steward of what the Lord has entrusted her with. My God, that, that, that's a heavy calling. That's a heavy calling. Now, all of you females out there who have had children, you know and I know that your greatest joy is when you have broken your neck for your kids. You can't explain it. It is hard work on many different levels, but it is so satisfying to you, and it is fulfilling, and you cannot find that fulfillment anywhere else. You have tried, and you did not find it. Hmm? That's why Jesus said what he said. That's why the scriptures say what they say. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. Husbands are supposed to do what? Love their wives. As God, uh, as Jesus loved the church, or God loved the church. Well, guess what? The Savior gave his life for the ecclesia. Gentlemen, you're not to abandon her. That's why a woman's greatest fall comes from insecurities. Did you know that? She cannot justify securities. Men grant that security and will die doing. Do you not know that a guy who dies granting security to their other half can plant a seed of joy in the other person that will last for the rest of their lives? If we would just stop coming up with our own theories and listen to the most high. It's already been paved. Now, what about teaching the word of God? What about that? Why is it not good? Why did the apostle say it was not good for a man to be underneath the authority of a woman? What's that all about? Can't you see? Can anybody see it? Well, first, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. How many guys out there, right, can truly understand a woman to where God will say, yep, you understand them. Huh? Does a woman mystify you, yes or no, in any way? Have you ever looked at a woman and said, I don't know why she did that? Why did she ever do that? You ever say that? I don't know why she did that. What is she doing that for? Or she asks you a question, you answer, you give her a good answer. I mean the best answer. You give her the best answer you can. She turns around and walks away. Well, what? I answered the question. That was my best answer. And you just, what, what, I don't understand. Isn't that what guys do? Because a woman can ask a question that looks obvious. She does not want the answer to that question. She wants you to see something totally different, and you can't even get it. And so you sit there and say, I don't understand. She may ask you, well, what is the hardest part of cooking dinner, right? 
And you say, well, it's, it's definitely got to be preparation. She walks, walks off. She's angry. You don't even understand why. She didn't want you to say that. You know what she wanted you to say? The hardest part of cooking dinner? She wanted you to say all of it. I recognize what you're doing. I do. I appreciate it. And it is, I appreciate all of it. Let me give you a hand. That's what she wants. For you to recognize all of what she's doing, but that's not what you did. You answered the question directly. She didn't want the answer to that. She didn't get that from anybody. She wants you to see. See how difficult that is? Who knew when a woman would ask such a question? They don't want the answer. They want you to see. Because women walk around, they won't tell you this. They sit there and walk around, and they call you blind and deaf all day long. They do. He can't see anything. He doesn't understand anything. He should know by now. Right? Isn't that how they do? Huh? They can't hear a thing. I'm crying my heart out. And they can't hear any of it. And the guys over there like, nobody's crying. Nobody cried for a month. What is she talking about? Crying her heart out. What is that all about? It's because men and women operate differently. They perceive the world differently. Differently. Very differently. God separated, right? The two, he took one out of the other. In completing both, but both together are complete. So that means they're different. You take two sides of an egg. You cut an egg in half. After you peel it, they're not the same. They're not the same. In order for them to fit perfectly together, they have to be orientated first and then put back together as they were cut apart. Orientation is always first. Always first. Orientation is something missed with a lot of people. Orientation is to recognize, hey, that half is not like me, though we fit in these specific areas. Right? We fit in these specific areas. Let's go ahead and connect in these specific areas. And when couples do that, they join. They don't fit in every area. They fit in specific areas. And the rest will lay flat against the other. Orientation is first. Some people try to put themselves together upside down with the other person, and it is a living disaster. God can work it out, but still, my goodness. And then the biggest thing, here's the biggest thing, while women want guys to see and to hear so that they can ultimately understand, the guy is only worried about the bottom line and needs to get the essentials out of the way or he cannot be happy. See, a guy cannot be complete with his joy unless he has secured his family. He has to secure the family. If a guy knows the family is safe, he can deal with everything else. If that family is not safe, it doesn't matter what it's done. The guy's going to be unsettled. It's going to be unsettled. Now, how can a man get to know that the house is safe? Well, let me tell you this, ladies. So, you ready? Here it comes. Here it comes. If the woman of that house is not stable. The household is not stable. Hate to dump this on you, ladies. If you're not stable, your kids are not stable. Nothing in the house is stable. That's on you. That's on you. If you are stable, no matter what happens, the household is good. If the world blew up, but that woman in the household tells that man, hey, we can do this. Even if she can't do anything, she says, we can do this. Encourage this. That guy, I'm telling you right now, that could be Barney Fife. He's going to go out and tackle the world because you said it's going to be all right because you support him. Now you're operating like a backbone. Now you're causing the house to be strong. It is not partly weak and partly strong. It's not like that. No. Now you're being one. See, because when you get weak, 
in doing something, sometimes you have to encourage your own soul. You have to remind yourself what the Lord said. And then you get encouraged by way of the soul, and you, you, you muster up enough intestinal fortitude to go forward and do things, right? Sometimes you can sit there and say, I'm not worth anything. There's nothing worth nothing. And you'll sit there for a while until you are encouraged. Household is no different. Now, when the household is rocking back and forth, and each refuses to be comforted, spirits take over. They will attack your children. Just as they attack you, don't tell me they can't attack your children because some of you were abused. Some of you were severely abused. Some of you lived a young life and it was just like hell on earth. So don't tell me spirits can't come through. Yes, they can. If the parents are at war, the children are uncovered. Because if you're at war with your spouse, you're not praying for your children. You're not actively covering that household, and spirits will get in. And this is the wrong time for you to do that. There are physical consequences of things out there. And that process has already begun. The only way to get caught off guard like that is if you feed into yourself. Well, I need a break. Well, I need this. Well, I that. See, that's no sacrifice in that language. And the truth of it is you want someone to comprehend, to see something. Let me give you some advice. Don't look at a vessel of whom God never gave eyes to see, to see something. Stop doing that. Stop trying to make the blind see and the deaf hear. They have to have healing first. Jesus came to restore sight to the blind, didn't he? So the deaf could hear, didn't they? You can't make a deaf person hear by getting angry at them. You can't do that. You can't make a blind person see by fussing at them. You can't do that. And you walking away giving up, you're causing more damage. You can't do that. See, when your house is rocking back and forward, somebody's going to have to say, you know what, no, no war here. I refuse to fight. I'll be the humble one. I'll be the meek one. But I'll stand like iron for this family, no matter what. That's what you do. When you can do it, that's what you do, gentlemen. When you can do it, that's what you do, ladies. You have a responsibility of that household. You have to nurture that household. You're the one that can do it. That's why you're here. That's why you're female. That's why God made you a female, because he gave you an awesome responsibility that only you can do. Gentlemen, haven't you noticed you had no patience with your first child? Those of you who had children, you had no patience with it. You loved the first child and everything else, but you had to deal with feelings you never thought would ever surface. It was something so different. It was spooky. And then, ladies, believe it or not, you became the savior of the situation because the guy was looking to you to make the right decision. He didn't have a clue. But something in him told him you knew what you were doing. Do you know that? My goodness. Now, if people knew this, they would stop trying to be what they're not, but God did not make them, and they would maximize in the area that God did make them, and they would stand up and have completeness in their life. So many people are content with being empty and powerless, like a plague spread, spreading across the lands, and nobody can stop it. All we had to do was hear the Lord in the first place. Everybody's looking for joy and peace. Everybody says the same thing. I just want some peace. I wish I had peace. You can have peace. But you cannot have the peace God has for you by your own methods. You're not going to achieve it because your carnal method or your flesh method, well, it's not going to be God's method. Somebody says, what if we can't reproduce? It doesn't matter. You still have that nurturing calling, and God has surely put people in your path. Listen, a child is nothing but a small human being. Isn't that correct? That's a small human being, right? Another adult who needs guidance is a bigger human being, but they're all human beings. God made you to nurture. 
always. That's why people love their grandmothers. That's why they talk about their grandmommies. And you hear kids talk about their mommies. And you hear the papa story from here, and the, you know, from time to time. And the dad story from time to time. Dad is security. But mom, that's the doer. Right? Dad does things to provide security for the house that nobody sees. Women, you wouldn't like that. If nobody ever gave you credit for anything, you would implode. Do you understand that? You would implode. A guy can work all of his life and never get credit for work and get chewed out for everything so long as that house has security. He's made to be content in that way. Do you know that? Because he's doing something. Grandma was hands-on, right? The grandmother knew everybody, and everybody knew her. Ladies, whether you are the only one of your family, or you got a bunch of family members, they're brothers and sisters in Christ all the time who come from broken backgrounds, who need your security. Remember when Jesus was on the cross and he said, Behold your son. Oh, but why did he say that? Why did he say that? that? Why did he say that those who love me, who are taking care of me, and love the gospel, love the father, that's my sister and brother and uncle, dad, and everybody else? He's talking about family. We have fellow believers who have not been nurtured. They've been fatherless. Where are you? It's in you to do it, and you know it. That's why it saddens you. A lot of women are going around there saying, I can't, I can't bear children, and it eats them up. Why? Because they have, a, they have this natural calling to nurture someone with no one to nurture. Yes, you do have people to nurture. That's when you reorganize your life in the way of the gospel. Don't do anything your way, but seek to be obedient to Christ. Truly request his instruction for you, that's when you get together with other women. My goodness, women together can be powerful. They turn into this, this prayer fortress that Satan can do nothing with it. Why do you think he starts things between women all the time? In fact, anybody who prays, you better expect someone to whisper in your ear the misdeeds of another in hopes that you two never get together. He'll do it every day. He'll launch campaign after campaign after campaign to keep you separated. Because if you ever pray together, Christ is going to be in your presence. And because you have emotions and can feel situations, you are in tune with what the adversary is doing. Stop falling victim to that. Learn to be victorious over that through prayer. You have motivations to pray. You do. Men, we do too. Women more so than anybody else. But Satan is duping the world. And he's ripping it to shreds. He's already attacked the family, and he's reassigning what a person is by way of the soul. The flesh is one thing. A person can still be obedient in the soul no matter what. But Satan is attacking that most of all. He's making room for his troops, his shock troops to come up on the earth. And they're coming little by little by little by little. I mean real shock troops. I'm not talking about some fake, you know, somebody saw something thing. No, real shock troops, flesh and blood shock troops, shock troops that you can do nothing against. There will come a time when a person in a neighborhood at nighttime will not turn on no lights in hopes that nothing, nothing will believe that they're alive in that house. Uh, that day is coming. That day is coming. Darkness has an understanding of when it can consume and when it cannot. The earth has been replenished. Iniquity is at a very high level. And the dogs are starting to run. Many have no defense. None. Those days are not coming. These times are expanding. 
There's cities right now that have been shut down. No human being can step foot in these cities. There are towns that have been shut down by order of the government of that specific country. Nobody can go in there because you will not come out. The territory of ancient things was once fully taken away, undone by Christ. Because more and more reject Christ. Multitudes are coming back. The days will soon be here when people once again believe in things like the Nephilim, cry of humanity, is soon to be heard. Wherever iniquity flourishes, they'll be there to consume. Wherever Christ is not, wherever the lands are cursed, they will be able to walk. And as they walk, they will consume and torment. And it's spreading. And people these days, they do not believe in the supernatural power of the Lord. Why? Why? Because you have even of some preachers, I'll say it again, teachers, whatever they want to call themselves, they get up there. And because it's not working out for them, they adjust how they believe the word of God. They're adjusting it. Their interpretation is different. They take out the supernatural aspects and they rationalize it. Then before you know it, all they're talking about is how you can be a better person, a good person. That's it. Just a good person, a better person, and be happy. And gain all of what you can gain and have a paradise here on earth and be happy some more is all they talk about. Why? Because they are experiencing Nothing from the Father. The only thing they experience is a little boost in income. That's it. So they concentrate their efforts in that area. They call that a severe blessing. Hmm? Because they don't know what supernatural is. Some of you do not know what supernatural is because you have not experienced that. Only some, only some. Many of you have. You may not have categorized it yet. Right? Many of you have, like the times you got out of things and you don't know how that happened, but you're thankful. You know, like the secrets that people have. And they have no idea how God brought them through, but somehow they got through. You remember the times when you could barely function because you, you wanted it to be all over. Many saints contemplated suicide. They saw no way out. And they wanted to die. See, you stand here right now tonight, fully delivered from whatever that was. And it's unclear to you of the process God utilized to bring you out. But you know he brought you out. Never forget how God delivered you. Never. Bring that up often. How God delivered you. That's how you utilize your past. You say, wait a minute, hold up, stop. God delivered me. Why am I losing? God delivered me. I do that just about every single day. I do think about how God delivered me. It is a real motivator. And Satan can't do anything about it. He tried to obstruct it. He can't do it. It's done. He can't do it. You're delivered. And the Bible says if you reflect on how God delivered you, it will add strength to you. That's in your Bibles. It's in my Bible, too. That's awesome. And Satan can't do anything about that. He cannot rob you of that. See, a million things can go wrong in my life. I'm so thankful. It only takes one time for the Lord to deliver you authentically, and I'm telling you, it's enough. But he's going to continue to do it because he said he would. All right, now I've talked enough. Now time for your questions. I, I got totally off the subject there. I did. Totally off the subject. Hmm. Did you guys, uh, I know you guys know about the, the uh, Israeli issue today, right? We'll see what happens over the weekend. Be reminded also, countries are waiting on what the people decide in the USA. The USA will determine, it will determine 
the type of destructive power that's about to be used. It will. Somebody says, wait a minute, let me go back. Somebody had a good one. Let me see. Somebody said, question, in Acts 16, Paul cast the Python Saint Spirit out of a girl. Uh, Pass that Saint Spirit out of a girl. She followed Paul many days, saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which, which show unto us the way of salvation. Is this the same spirit as the snakes and scorpions that you see in people now? I would say yes. Yeah, and, and that is true. I cannot, listen, I can't help that. That's just something that happened to me, and that's what I see. That's what I see. Scorpions are snakes in people. There are tons of scorpions. Scorpions are, they're all over the place. They are the structure of this world, right? They maintain it. They do things, very specific things, and very they, they, everything is timed, everything is orchestrated. Serpents are far and few in between. They're the ones that give, you could say that they're like, they're like directors of operations, right? And that's how I see people. I see a lot of scorpions, they're all over the place. Now, I wouldn't suggest that any of you pray, Lord, let me see a scorpions and snakes, don't do that. Because your life won't be the same. If you can see them, they can see you. Right? They will test to see if you can see them too. They will. They, in fact, let me, let me tell you guys something. These spirits will test to see if you can recognize what they truly are. And if you can see them, there's going to be a problem. See, once you see something like that, you cannot afford to go into a fit of carnality because the day you do, you're going to be torn to shreds. You'll be just like Lot's wife. And God will deal with them. The Lord will. They're doing things right now. They will be utilized to fulfill certain parts of prophecy. But I said, did you know spiders kill scorpions? Some spiders. Scorpions are cannibals. They'll eat their own babies. No, eat their own babies. But something worse than both is it's on the way. Snakes and, or serpents and scorpions have been on the earth. Something far worse is on the way. Reminds me of another dream I had. I was, we were putting on these uniforms. They looked like space uniforms, right? And we had to put the helmet on. Well, we were going to do something, and this guy did not put his helmets on. The spiders came from everywhere. They were all over the place. This guy had his whole uniform on and everything else, but his helmet was not on. So we go inside this building, thought we were safe. I'm telling you, those spiders came from everywhere. And they went right down the neck of his suit. And that was it. But man, listen, in that dream, I was checking my everything. I was like, oh, my Lord, is this thing on tight, right? Because I didn't want those spiders to get in there. They were, they were everywhere. They covered the streets. The buildings, the walls, everything. It was worse. They, they consumed scorpions. They consumed the serpents. They consumed everything and nothing was left. That helmet was the helmet of salvation. The rest of the uniform was robust. But if you didn't have the helmet, they were going to devour you anyway. And it kind of reminded me of the helmet of salvation in the Word of God. Right? If you don't know you're saved, you better find that out. And what I mean by that is knowing the story of Christ, because the helmet of salvation is obviously guarding something very precious, right? It is. Your mind. That means you can have a mindset based in salvation or not. And if your mindset is not based in salvation, it is going to be based in very destructive things. And you will have no defense against what's coming. You'll have no defense against what is starting to dig its way up. You'll have no defense. Rituals won't work. None of that is going to waste the blood of the Lamb. It's not going to matter what you say. It's not. They're going to be empowered to do what they do and to torment people. And in those days, people will seek death and will not find it. Men will desire to die and death will flee from them. Those are not going to be good days. So salvation is going to be everything. And anybody who's playing with the salvation does not have a helmet on. 
You can have faith, right? You can have all the elements. If you don't have the helmet, the armor does not work. That's your acceptance of the gospel. To accept Christ, to believe in him, is to believe in what he stood for. To believe in his word. Not just to believe that he died on the cross, no. But you've got to believe that he died on the cross for you. And if you believe that he died on the cross for you, then you acknowledge your iniquities. And if you acknowledge your iniquities, you have looked at your past. And you know who you used to be. If you do that and you recognize the cross and you do indeed accept it, you have repented of the activities of your past and you seek a newness with Christ, absent the sin of your life. So then you're, you're, for, you're going forward with Christ. You're going to be very careful to do things found in the gospel. Because, by the way, Jesus spoke in the gospels. The gospel, that word means good news. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the good news of Christ. So what is the good news? What is the good news, anybody out there? What is the good news? What is the good news of Jesus Christ? What is it? Somebody tell me. What is the good news? What is it? Because if you don't believe in the good news, you don't believe in the gospel. Gospel means good news. The good news of Jesus Christ. So what is the good news? What is the good news of Jesus Christ? Anybody? that our sins can be forgiven, yes, that's only good news to those who were seeking repentance. You, you guys who realize this goes back to repentance, listen to me. It is not good news for someone who is not seeking repentance. See, when you come to that wall and you say, wait a minute, I messed up everything. I can't even go to be with the Father because I've broken the Ten Commandments. And you start taking that seriously you will realize you have messed up your life. Then you hit this brick wall. You say, Lord, there's nothing that can be done. I'm guilty. I'm guilty and will be judged. And at that point, it's a sad day, right? But Christ came as a sacrifice for what? To be able to forgive those who have repented. There's no need for forgiveness unless somebody repent. When you repent, you can be forgiven. That's, listen, I'm not talking about somebody going up saying, I'm, I'm, I'm just sorry. No, repentance is when you have a heart to turn away from what you used to be. So the good news of Christ is this. He is just to forgive and to restore. There's a restoration with it. A restoration. Hmm? That's a restoration. Somebody says, please explain Titus 2.13, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing, appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That is the closing of it all, right? Of which all will be present. That is the end of it all. That is the end of, listen, if you love your Father in heaven and you believe in the gospel and you have a repentant heart, you're also looking at your fellow man. You know what sinners are dealing with, and you have a heart for those sinners to come to righteousness. You know this life is not easy. See, when you believe in Christ, when you believe in the gospel, when you pursue Christ, you're no longer looking for a paradise on this earth, but you understand the process. And when you understand the process, you look out at the millions of people who are in bondage, who are blind, who are deaf, and you fall to your knees for them. And when you fall to your knees for them, you say, Lord, when, when, when will they be delivered? When will they be? See, while everybody else is saying, Lord, when you're coming to get me, that's not my prayer. My prayer is, Lord, when? When can they be delivered? Because when you have an understanding of how you were duped in the following sinful ways, you know what they're duped about. You know, it's difficult. You know how tricky things are. You know, you used to have a lot of Christians who say, oh, I hate a liar. Well, they hate themselves. That was one of the most pious statements I ever heard. God hates a liar, yes. God also hates a bunch of things. But God called us to repentance by way of Christ. In our filthy state, he called us to repentance. People are walking around saying, I hate a liar. 
And as soon as their phone rings, they don't answer it. Having that person believe a lie. Lord have mercy. Same thing. Same exact thing. The smallest infraction of your communication can end up being a lie. A lack of any fulfillment is going to turn out being a lie. Not telling the whole truth is a lie. Projecting ourselves to be something we're not is a lie. If I were to hug someone and they said, how you doing? And I say, I'm okay, but I'm not okay. I'm a liar. Aren't I? God never called us to act pious and be so perfect, right? Be at that state of perfection in our own minds that we would say, I hate a liar. But I'll tell you something. We were in sin lying, and God loved us. So you're on your own. God seeks for us to be redeemed, desiring that none of us be lost. That's why that scripture says, God is not slack concerning his promises, as men count slackness, but as long suffering to us were. See, nobody who lies is going to enter into the kingdom of God. Nobody who steals or does any of those things. But God called us to repentance because we were lying, thieves, and all sorts of things. Weren't we? Yes, we were. We're sinners saved by grace. So anything you hate of any infraction of somebody else, you just simply escaped from through Christ. What in the world are people bragging about? We're saved by grace. But people are pious, big time. We say foolish things sometimes, forgetting that we were once liars and thieves and fornicators and adulterers. We forget about that. And we came to Christ and said, Lord, forgive me. I don't want to be like that anymore. And he forgave us. Yet we would turn around and say how we hate this person for doing the same things we did. Or hate this person for doing the same things we did. Just because we say we're not doing them anymore, that's hypocrisy. The Bible teaches us, with all these sinners in it, that God so loved the world. That's what the Bible teaches. It reminds me of another dream when the wounded were all outside the church and nobody would let them inside the church. The only people that were inside the church, right, were those with the same clothing doing the same exact thing. And in the dream, I wanted to bring the wounded into the church and they said, no, they don't look like us. They can't come in here. How did I know they were wounded? All of them had white bandages on. A fog came and did everything that the church, that so-called church, would not do. Here's the funny thing. All the people inside that church were wearing black. The bandages on the people who were wounded, trying to get to the church to get healed. All the bandages were pure white. But those inside the church were in suits. They looked good, but they were all black. They said they cannot come in here. They have to dress like we do. Have to be like us. They are. They can't come in here. And sure enough, I hate to say it. When I had that dream, I tried to tell that dream. I was young too, and I told it to a few people. They couldn't understand it. Look at what's happening right now. The wounded are outside the church, and everybody in the church is throwing a party. They even go so far as to talk about the wounded inside the church or how bad they are, how wounded they are. Look how wounded that one is. Look how wounded that one is. They say it without fear. Not afraid of repercussions. They're not afraid of what God may do because they really don't believe in the living God. They believe in something else now. We can do better. I pray that we do right in this place to never reject the wounded. Find a way. We have to find a way. We have to find a way to get to them. Because didn't the Lord find a way to get to us? He didn't force us to see anything. He didn't force us to come to him and mess out what he did. He found a way with great patience. I think God had more patience with me than anybody else. 
There's no way I'm not going to have patience for somebody else. People have tried to make me enemies of other folks. They know for a fact I'm not going to listen to them. That's just me. I'm not doing that. I'm the worst person I know. Do you know that? I am the worst person I know. And I love my Savior. All right. I'm going to take a break, come back. I'm going to answer your questions right here. See if everything is on the table. Hopefully you ask some about Revelation. Everything is on. Listen, you guys help me out with the questions, right? If if I can't see it quick enough, kind of copy it, and repaste it, repaste it, repaste it, I'll get to it. If I get a bunch of repaste of a question, I know that you guys want it. Also, you can get a selection process like that. You paste enough of the same question, I'll know you want that one answered. And I'll get to it right away. You guys have great questions, by the way, you do. Right. Everything is on the table, so let's go for it. Hit it. Don't worry about the, um, just, just be yourselves when you do that, too. You don't have to formulate some complicated, sophisticated question. Don't do that. Just speak from the heart. Ask those real, I like those real questions, the real ones. Those motivate me big time. Right? I feel like I'm doing something. So when I come back, make me feel like I'm doing something. Please make me feel like I'm doing something. I'll be back in a few minutes, guys. Right here in a few minutes. Right here at COT. All right, everybody. I'm back. Let's go. First question. Please. What do we have here? Oh, don't do that. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, here we go. I really hope you guys, Northern California, you guys take, listen to your local forecast, please. That's a very serious uh, storm. Very serious rain, so please. What are your thoughts about the importance of an in-service church attendance? I think they're important. I do. For the, it's for the person, it depends on where you are. It really does. In today's world, since we're talking about multiple countries, if you can find people to affiliate with, good. Uh, be around like-minded believers. Just remember one thing, right, one thing. Attending a church by way of its popularity is not the goal here. And the goal is to be around like-minded believers, right? To hear the word of God and try not to hear what you want to hear, but what's being said. Um, and to, in a lot of cases, help out that local assembly. Because it is, in fact, an assembly of the saints, if you find that. The Lord will guide and lead you into the right place. I think it's important, though. I think it's important. I really do. Absolutely, I do. Somebody says, if we are in heaven, we will come back with Jesus for a thousand-year reign. Jesus was very specific on that, right? The New Jerusalem is occupied, just so you know that. He's coming back with 10,000 of his saints. The thousand-year reign... Those who will rule and reign with Christ, he specifically named as those who held the faith through a duration of time, right? So, eventually, when the New Jerusalem comes down to earth, right, a new rule is going to be on the earth forever. Uh, those who rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years, they are purposed to do so, right? And they, that, that, that's named in the book of Revelation. We'll, we'll go over that. It's in the book of Revelation. It is named. And so uh, that's going to be an interesting read. It really will. I'm going to reserve that one for the reading in Revelation. I think that uh, you guys will be inspired by that one. Let's put it this way. The Lord doesn't lead people out. And once you are with him, right, nobody's going to miss anything. How about that? How about that? Nobody will miss anything. Somebody says, uh, how do we know our voice from Satan and from God in our thoughts? Well, the Father's word is, will always align with the word of God. It is never selfish. God doesn't give us anything that's going to pump us up above somebody else or any of that stuff. He didn't do that. Nor does he give us anything to accuse anybody else. God will give us something according to his word which aligns with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it will be confirmed in trembling. Right. When God speaks, trust me, you'll know. You'll not have a doubt of whose voice it is. If you have a doubt of what voice you're hearing, don't move at all. 
Don't move by way of doubt. If you doubt what something is, don't act on that. Act on the true word of God. When God instructs you, believe me, every fiber of your being is going to know it's the living God. And nobody on earth will be able to, you know, make you walk in, you know, some different direction. But the Father does things based on his word, which is full of sacrifice. It's uh, full of meekness and humility. It does nothing to prop up the flesh, nor to perpetuate the flesh, right? So he's going to call you for something or instruct you to do something you don't necessarily want to do. It's going to go against the nature of your very um, flesh. It goes, it goes against all self-protection and everything else. The Father does not work in that paradigm because by his power you are maintained, right? So it's not going to give you something just that's going to save you and nobody else, right? We speak in our own minds trying to survive. That's something we have to get over. When you give your life to Christ, have an understanding that your life is being held in his hands. In other words, you're being instructed and raised up to do all things in righteousness, right? And learn to obey the word of the Lord that you may obey the Lord, right? Whatever he does is not going to disagree with his uh, word. It just won't. It will align with it. It will. We often make up things and go after it for various uh, reasons, right? But if it makes you shine above somebody else, that's probably not the Lord. Probably is not. He will assign us to do things nobody will find out about. Uh, good things that require sacrifice. Sometimes a lot more than nobody will ever find out about. How do we know this? Because one of his principles is this. When you do your good deeds, right? Do your good deeds in secret that your father may reward you openly. Don't pray in this, in, in the, um, what do you say, in the course and things like that, to thinking that you're going to be heard of your many prayers, right? No, he said, go into your secret place. So as you can see, God does things at a very uh, righteous level where you're not doing things to get credit for it and shine in, the, in this realm. No, you're doing things for real. When you really help someone, you don't want everybody to know you've helped that person. You just want that person to get help, right? If an ambulance driver uh, was really wanted to help someone, they're not going to go around bragging, hollering out the window, hey, I've got so-and-so in the back and I'm helping him. That's not what they do. They're focused on the help. They don't care who sees or who does not. They're going to get the person help. And so God is very authentic in his ways like that, very authentic. What he says, uh, let's see. Hold on, Mixler over there trying to get this all in. Somebody says, are all the horses in Revelation loosed and riding now? You guys know I have my own, uh, I have what the Lord gave me, and I have to be true to that, right? When the Lord gives me something, and when he gave me most of what he gave me, I was a kid. Before I could read or do anything else, there was an understanding I received. So it's not by way of the environment or, or different things that happen in life that I believe the way I do. I was given most of what I believe when I was a child. And when it comes to the uh, seals being broken, I've always seen them leaving, right? They, they, they started leaving a long time ago. I just don't, inter it, the interpretation of what people have, like they'll say, God is about to release the white horse or something like that, right? Well, mine's a bit different. And it's based on scripture. I have to go with scripture and the Lord gave it to me. So I keep it. I don't exercise my view over anybody else's, right? I don't necessarily want anybody to listen to my view, I want to, I mean, I'd rather them hear the word of God. But the Lord gave me things I had to be true to. If I alter that to suit people, that's hypocrisy. I'm not, yeah, I can't do that. I can't do that. I have to go with what the Lord gave me. And in, you know, the, the, uh, the, the white horse that has a bow that went forth conquering and to conquer, uh, that, that left us in, in with what? And we'd have peace on the earth. There's no peace on the earth. The earth, there's no peace. There's the illusion of peace. And that's not peace, right? They're trying to establish peace absent the Messiah. How does that happen? Just like the bike horse with the scales. A lot of people see a financial collapse. I do not. I see a system that was put in place 
right? That horse, to me, was a spirit that represented that at some point, everybody would have money. And they would use money to get things, right? It's that simple. It would be measured out, which means we would have a global economy like we have had where people buy things that they use to trade. Everything is based off money now. Everything is it's based off money, right? And it is measure for measure. Everything is based off money. That's what I saw. I think it was like eight, something like that, seven or eight, when I could recognize that. So there you are. I had to go with what the Lord gave me. I really do. It doesn't make everybody else wrong. It just means I have a certain insight I had to be true to. I had to be true to that. Okay, let me back up. Back up. Let me see. Hold on, guys. Somebody says, what is the difference between living a life of obedience to God's word according to scripture and having a strong desire to do things to please God? Or more so, more so is there a different way? Are we to live doing to receive the promises of our Heavenly Father? Are we to live to receive? Are we to live life doing to receive the promises of our Father? Well, my motivation for doing what I do is not to receive anything. It is to give everything. It is why my Savior gave it all for me. Right? I seek to honor the Savior. And I can I agree with the gospel. When you agree with the gospel of Jesus Christ, you have a desire to perform those things in the gospel. You agree with Christ. You're not doing it for reward. That, that's very close to the teaching of Balaam. Um, but no, I don't do it for reward, for recognition, or any of those things. There are lots of things I do that nobody knows about, nobody is ever going to know about, right? They're just not going to know about those things. Because that's my, that's my honor unto the Most High. That's my honoring Christ, right? I don't need anybody to know. I need to do a real work. And there's a difference, and when you want to do a real work, you're not concerned about people knowing. I've been thrown under the bus. I remember one time somebody said, well, you know, uh, Mike, you didn't do, that was, that was about the, what, the, the second month of when I was talking. They said, well, well you didn't do anything. And these people were angry. They didn't even know me. So that never bothered me. I could have came out and said, oh, yes, I do, and got people on the phone, got some testimonies going in, everything else. That's precisely what Satan wants us to do. Right? To start bragging about what we did. And then we have just, when we do that, when you brag about what you have done, you just announced that you did it. I don't brag about what I've done because I'm empowered by the Most High. I couldn't do it without Him. Right? He's utilizing me to do things. I'm honored by that. Just simply honored. Anyway, there that one is. There that one is. Somebody says, uh, let me see, guys. Oh, Antichrist and the false prophet. You talked about the Antichrist and the false prophet. And the Antichrist might be the same. Let me go back. This is a good one. Or maybe I misunderstood. I was reading, and this, it says both. So wondering if maybe two different. No. You have the dragon. You have the beast. You have the second beast, right? which is the exact same as the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, which is the exact same thing as the Antichrist, right? The beast and the dragon. All three elements, just three elements. The problem is it's popular in movies to have the false prophet and the Antichrist to be two different things. But in my, that's not what it says in my Bible. The first beast is a collection of nations and kings appointed over those nations, right? The second beast, who has two horns like a lamb and speaks of dragon, is the one that institutes the mark of the beast. When you read later on in Revelation, you see about the three unclean spirits that came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. The false prophet is that last beast with the two horns like a lamb and speaks of dragon, the one that institutes the mark 
That is the false prophet. Because he does signs and wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven in view of all men. And people believe by means of those miracles that he did in sight of the beast. He is also the same one that told the world that they should make an image to the beast. And he was the one that gave life to the image of that beast. Matter of both, it would kill those who did not worship the beast. So you can clearly see that the Antichrist is the false prophet. And the false prophet is the Antichrist. That's why he has two horns like a lamb, but he spake as a dragon, right? And he props up the first beast, which is that selection, that uh, collection of kingdoms. So in other words, even in Revelation it says that the ten kings who have received no power as of yet will give their power unto the beast, one hour with the beast, right? So the Bible is clear. Those words, um, the, the uh, second beast that comes out from the land, right? Not from the people. He didn't come from among the people. He comes out from the land. This is something different. He does religious things, but he spake as a dragon, right? With the legal mouth of Satan himself. He speaks with the, with the uh, dragon, or um, I'm sorry, he he edified the first beast, had everybody make it, and he speaks as a dragon, so he understands worldly speech and political speech and all this and the other, but he has two horns like a lamb. He's one that does the false miracles and stuff in front of everybody and has those lines, signs, and wonders all over the place. All right, Tom, did you guys lose me? Really? Talking about the beast again, that must have got good. I didn't see you guys. I didn't see the comment. Are you guys back? Yeah, it's good to go. I guess people missed that whole thing. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go over the beast, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, or the dragon, the beast, and the antichrist, or the dragon, the beast, and the second beast. Right? I'm gonna have to go over that so people understand that connection. So I'll announce it. Anybody who wants to hear it, when I do announce, when I go over that topic again. Just pop in. I'll make it a live audio. Anybody can tune in. Probably be an afternoon study. Uh, you don't have to come in and hear it. I'll just do it during the afternoon so people can see that. That's all. <laughs> we lost audio when you were explaining that. Go figure. Uh, how convenient. How convenient. I think Hollywood has messed up the Word of God in the minds of so many. That's what I believe. And the word of God is very um, precious to read, to know. But, but, of course, I do not go after popular things. I'm not going to believe because, uh, you know, everybody else does. I just can't do that. All right. Let's see. Uh, what do you say? When do the saints get the full indwelling of the Holy Ghost? Well, that's an ongoing thing. And it's based upon a person's readiness to truly obey the Lord with a full commitment unto the Most High. Next, as the Lord said, the Holy Ghost is reserved for those who obey the Lord. Just natural, right? Natural. All right, Mickler, what do you have? Question, Mike, do you have any idea why I keep having nightmares about zombies? Horrible dreams. This time they kept trying to bite me, never bit me. Third time within months. I don't even watch TV. Let me ask you this. Where did you hear of the of, of the zombie narrative? Did you hear of that? The zombie narrative. Normally it comes from some show on TV. It doesn't matter what year. It comes from some show on TV, some conversation. All the talk they used to have about the the um, uh, zombies were coming and this and the other. I'll tell you something. There have been military exercises in certain towns undisclosed. They will not disclose them. The information is um, classified where they have extracted something. Okay. Let's see. Next one. Oh, somebody says during the days of the last kingdom, the stone cut without hands. Uh, this volcano do the saints make it erupt? Can we associate with the ones who see us? The, 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 
the last kingdom is God's kingdom, the kingdom that will not be removed. And it, it just obliterates all the other kingdoms uh, before it, right? It is the one that's made without hands. So you have to read that again, right? Read that again. Because it was talking about the building of that kingdom. Read that again. Somebody says, please explain Titus 2.13. Looking for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior. Oh, I did it at the beginning. You missed that? We already did that one. Didn't we? That's a conversation. And that takes a precept. It is something as simple as this. That whole reading established Jesus as a hope. After it mentioned the process that we all undergo, right? So he is that hope. He is. His word, his fulfillment, right? And the completion of salvation in all of us. Oops. Well, went to the well and Samaria and met the woman there. It was Jacob's well. Is there something to, to this? Yes, Jacob's well. Who was Jacob? All of you guys are Jacob. It's a Jacob story with all of you guys. Jacob's well, did it dry up? Yes or no? Anybody? Anybody? Did Jacob's well ever dry up? Did it? Right? In the word of God, it says the word must be discerned spiritually. So it has some sort of, of, of spiritual growth, uh, uh, wisdom connected, right? Now, but did Jacob, what happened to Jacob? Do you guys remember what happened to Jacob? Anybody know what happened? Jacob was the one that did what? He wrestled with an angel, right? Do you guys remember that? He wrestled with an angel, right? Also, what else? So, what was the biggest thing with Jacob other than uh, that? The biggest thing other than that. There's something else to that. We should probably have a precept on that because I think in that story is you. It's all of you. All of you are in that story. It is you. You are in that story. The same components um, that Jacob is is also you. It really is you. Hmm. We'll go over that one day. We will. We will. I just jotted that down. We're going to go over that one day. For example, we'll take some precepts. I don't want to haphazardly answer anything. And then it not be, uh, it's just not going to cover everything. Because that will last two hours if I get into that conversation, that one alone. Two hours. But let's say if this, all of you are like Jacob. All of you are. And there's a, your process is his process and vice versa, right? Foreshadowing of things to come. Somebody says a question. So the beast, the first beast is a group. It, this person says the beast is a group of nations under the dragon at the very end. Well, let's correct that. The, the first beast is a group of nations, period. Okay, and it says, um, let me go back. Oh, my goodness, I lost it. See what I'm saying, guys? It is gone with the wind. Goodbye, sayonara. That was a good one, too. And it's totally gone. Gone. It's gone. All right, guys, I want you guys to, to, to uh, somebody says, I take one step forward. You feel like you're taking three back, falling into old habits, right? Well, it's a, this person says, but I want to be free if my worldly ways were good, but I don't know really how to do it. I'm burned based by myself in the old habits before I realize it. Uh, it's only after a time passed that I realize I might find myself in my old habits. So you're trying to get out of the old habits, right? You're trying to break that, and right? That takes commitment. You have to answer one question, and only one. Is the gospel worth your life? Yes or no? See, most people look at the gospel and they say, ooh, I want the gospel to save my life. No, is, is the gospel worth your life? 
The Savior gave his life for you. You can't do that again, right? You can't do that to anybody else to die for their sins. What you can do is commit to the gospel. Do you, uh, is it enough for you to die for? Because if it is, don't hold back, right? If it's something that you can commit to, don't hold back. Just simply don't hold back. Be fully committed to it for yourself. Not to change or convince everybody else. God will make that appointment. You just have to make sure things, you get, you know, certain things right. Mike, this week you have said that we should pray for the leaders because God has placed, God has placed them. But you've also said these kingdoms are Satan's and that these leaders are in his service. Which is it? Well, in Revelation, it says it's the, the beast is given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Who gave the beast that, that mouth? Man did not. God did. Satan, when he tempted Job, right, when he attacked Job, who let, who let uh, Satan attack Job? God did. He said, have you considered my servant Job? He did that. Now, why would he do such a thing? See, this... Just like Job was told, Job, Job was doing okay until he said, I don't even know why I was born. And God chewed him out and said, Joby, 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 you are created. You are not the creator. You exist for my pleasure. I do not exist for yours. And see, that's one thing we we can't even get that through our heads. We, we at, at some point, we don't want that to be true. We exist for the pleasure. Now, that word pleasure is not so God can have a good time, relax in a lounge chair. But no, we exist for his purpose. We exist for his purpose. Do you see that? His pleasure means his leisure, his, his plans, right? His path. That's why we exist. So, God has a way of taking one dark kingdom and birthing light out of it. He does that all the time. Hopefully, I got some of that right. Right? Hopefully, that's good. Ricky T. Wait a minute. I just saw Rick Dick Dobby in there somewhere. Where'd he go? There he is. God bless you, Rick T. Oh, let's see. Oh, goodness gracious. Somebody said, well, what are you guys talking about? Let's see, yeah, we it is because of like, yeah, we talked about that. What are you guys talking about? You guys are answering while we're like uh, Jacob because of identity. Your identity is based in that same thing. We're going to talk about that guy. We're going to talk about that one. Somebody says, uh, question, Mike, did you work with Chuck Missler? God bless his soul. Um, I know of Chuck Missler. I knew. God rest his soul. How about that? Right. He's a, he was a good instructor. He really was. He had a passion for things about the Lord. He had a technical mind, much like uh, a certain individual said, as Paul knows, right? Like Stan Day. And, uh, yeah, he did. And it was very, he was very diligent about the Lord. He was. He was also a person who dealt with a lot. He, he saw a lot. He dealt with a lot. And anybody who goes out, right, to give the word of God, I mean, really give the word of God. And they're not doing it to be, you know, better than somebody else, but you can tell they're really, attempting to assist people. When, when people do that, they have a heart for the living God. They really have a heart for the living God, right? I never want to see anything that will take away from him. Listen, if I knew somebody very well and somebody online said, hey, do you know so-and-so? I wouldn't answer that. And the reason why is because a lot of people do not like me. And I'm not going to bring somebody else down to affiliation with me. I can't do that. Can't do that. I'm not going to do that. Won't do that. Right? Because if I would ever say, oh, yeah, now, Pastor Paul, that's obvious. 
Um, send people on the internet. That's obvious. But just to just to answer that question, not very, not very uh, wise on my part, right? Not very wise. Okay, guys, back to the back to the questions. I'm getting old. So you guys better get it going. Let's see, is there, I'm going to take the top one, guys. I can't get all of them. I'm going to take the top one. But I do have these in a log, just in case you guys didn't know that. And I will be answering your questions, even outside this talk. Is there any significance about RH uh, negative blood? Well, a lot of people think it is. Here's the other. Can I, can I talk to you guys about something? Here's the Do you not know that there's a component to uh, everybody's DNA that they won't tell you about. You guys ever hear of junk DNA? That is not junk DNA, first of all. Did you guys also know, how many of you believe that you have, how many strands of DNA do you guys have? What In, in, in what, in what uh, configuration are uh, you uh, bound by? You know, some people say, oh, a triple helix is an alien or something like that, right? They already gave people the hint of that. They already told people. People just won't listen. They're not listening. You are, your, your body is a marvel. It's a marvel. It is adaptable. It's adaptable. It can accommodate your desires. All you have to do is go forward in your desires, and it will do the rest. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do the rest. But they found quite a few things. They found so much in the last two years that um, there's no way they can just uh, outright tell everybody that would send everything upon its head. For example, your DNA, if they told you it was different than what they initially thought, that would turn signs upside down. They, too, have to have time for that. Because people just can't swallow brand new facts um, all the time. They can't do it. They can't do it. I'll say this. Within your body is an ability to accommodate anything. And it begins with how you perceive yourself. Self-perception is a, is a big factor in, in, in what direction you're helping or your, um, what direction you're going as far as your body is concerned. They said, so what? The truth will set us free. Yeah, the truth will make you free. God's truth. Are we still on the original sun? And when did the moon uh, become in orbit to the earth? Oh, that's an easy one, isn't it? No, that's a controversial one, right? Nobody would believe me if I gave my insights on that. I'll defer that one for the midnight hour because no one would believe me. They, they, many things have to be demonstrated before people can actually take it in. And it's going to have to be demonstrated multiple times. One day, the moon will unmask itself, and then everybody will know exactly what it is. They're not going to like it. They will not like it. They won't. But it will uncover some things, right? It will. It will. You see what they say? It's just a... And please tell me who Babylon is and who Mystery Babylon is. What do you want to say? Thank you. Babylon and Mystery Babylon. Now, everybody has their opinion on Babylon and Mystery Babylon, right? First of all, that word mystery means hidden. It is America. <laughs> okay. Babylon was a place that had a welcome mat for any faith, right? Any type of person could become a part of that uh, place so long as they obeyed the rule of law. Uh, Babylon was responsible for the destruction of Israel a few times, and ultimately they 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 accepted the uh, all those people from Israel into itself, um, but it altered them, right? It became a burden unto the Lord. Babylon did, and so it perverted the ways of the holy people. Babylon did this, right? So it already has a not so good reputation. Is it? That's 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 the um, Babylon has a bad reputation, right? Mystery Babylon is hidden Babylon, so nobody would ever know it is Babylon. Why would it be Mystery Babylon? Because 
behind the curtain, they do things just like Babylon did, right? Would America be mystery Babylon? No, America would be obvious Babylon, right? We have the Roman, we have the recreation of the Roman uh, governing system, complete with the Senate and the House. We have all that, um, all of it. Now, according to the Word of God, though, what is Babylon? Well, see, the Lord likened the entire earth to Babylon. Babylon has a global rule and global dominion, not just one place, all of it. So Babylon is more or less a way of the nations, an identity or a spirit they operate by. Mystery Babylon was stamped on the forehead of a woman that Babylon hated. Remember that. Babylon hates Mystery Babylon. But like a person having a secret belief beyond, you know, uh, their own Christianity. You guys see that? What is Data Vault? The links will be going up in there shortly. The Data Vault is where all the little uh, data is kept. So those links will self-repair. It's collating things in there now in the KD files. Good observation. Very nosy. Been crawling the sites. Been some changes are happening on the site as we speak. Been busy. Says, how about the X3 fire today? Expect it. You told us be sure of our purpose. How? No, make sure, listen to me carefully, but when it comes to purpose, make sure that everything you do is purposed in line with the Word of God. Right? Make sure your life is highly purposed. Why? Because that's our Father's way. He does everything with purpose. Everything, every dimension, everything is a purpose. So we should do the same. If our Father set that standard, we should do the same. And as it turns out, when you live that way, your life is enriched, very enriched, very refined. It really is. Extremely refined. Somebody said they dropped a nuke on them. They didn't drop a nuke on the moon. It, that was uh, just simply explosions on the moon. Not so much a nuke. Let's see. Uh, like I said, if one black backslides after after uh, one's being saved, isn't that apostasy? And if so, isn't the blaspheming, is that blaspheming the Holy Spirit? Okay, let's stop right there. Blaspheming something. When you blaspheme something, you know what you're you know what you're talking about, right? Right. Otherwise, none of us would ever be redeemable. Correct. Right? right. None of us would. Listen to me, folks. To blaspheme something means you have identified it because you were a partaker of it. Now, in the Bible, it says you can blaspheme God, Christ. Everything else, but you cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Why? Because if you're ever a partaker of the Holy Spirit, right, and you blaspheme it, you're going to give up the ghost. That person, because that person is not going to be on earth. God will not kill them. The guilt factor will be so heavy, the person will take their own lives. That's where that comes from. Mm -hmm. So if we got that. Somebody said, all this about the moon God so created is just not what you think is right, correct. That's my opinion, correct. This new uh, monetary system, as per Bible word, coming anytime soon, you better believe it. Yes, it is. It's coming too soon. But you don't have to be afraid. You don't. Now, the Bible doesn't speak of a new monetary system. The Bible, listen, on those scales, it is my firm belief, the scales, right, that were seen in the seals was the establishment of a system that would allow people to take money. There was, a, there was a, the establishment of a global system of money. We already have that. It's not the same currency. It's the same practice. We take money and we buy things with it. That's all over the world. That's a standard that's been installed all over the world, right? Wheat will cost a certain amount of money. Barley will cost a certain amount of money. Everything that is grown, everything that you, that you seek to have is going to cost a certain amount of money, period. 
That is the world we live in. Everything has a price. Water has a price. Air has a price. Everything has a price. Right? That's what I saw being established when I was young. I never saw financial collapse. Never. I saw the establishment, right, of a system in the world where you would have to have money to get goods. That's it. That's it. And I, I, I do. I, guys, I kind of stay within. I stay within what the Lord gave me. I can hear everybody else. Right? So why would I ever stick? to that one thing I keep sticking to because that's what the Lord gave me before I could comprehend hardly anything. That's what the Lord gave me. And I had to be, I had to be um, authentic with him first, right? How big of a dodo would I be to discard what the Lord gave me, to go with what everybody else believed? God didn't give me what he gave everybody else. He gave me that thing. So that's what I have to stay with. I have to be honest with that. Okay, let's get back to it, back to it, back to it. Is there any, is there already a base on Mars with people? I'll, I'll defer that one. That one is going to be highly subjective. Highly. I guess where are we at? Where are we at? Thank you. Everyone seems to act. Somebody says, I've heard you say long ago, Wanted to pass down the message to forsake all earthly goods. Why? What practical? No, that was him. that was written in an actual prophecy. Forsake earthly goods and save the soul. That's that's a document. That's documented, right? Same thing. The same thing was prophesied before the flood in a lot of lands. People kept records. They did. Uh, people had dreams, for example, before the flood about trees floating in the air upside down, specifically trees floating in the air upside down where the roots were at the top and the foliage and everything was at the bottom. And they thought they were floating in the air, but the truth was that was water. They said they saw fish flying in the air, right? And think about that. These, uh, the dreams back then were documented, mistaking the, the water for air. Right? Nobody had seen a flood. But people started having dreams. So did you guys start having dreams around 2006 about floods. Remember that? A lot of people had dreams about floods. Ultimately, Cain. Okay, let's continue, guys. Let's hurry up. Let's hurry up. Somebody says, uh, Revelation 16, one of the frogs that come out of the dragons. Mouth, one out of the dragon, one out of the beast, one out of the false prophet. Those are the three unclean spirits are also spoken of in other, well, lost books of the Bible, you could say. But be careful with those, folks. If the Lord does not lead you to any of those books, don't take it up. Take up what the Lord gives you. Don't take up what somebody, you know, gets you interested in. But please don't do that. But those are the things that possess people to do things, right? That the um, devil's work will be manifest here. I see. I see where we're at. Can't talk to you. What, is, what part of Revelation are we in? What part of Revelation are we in? I think Revelation is relevant to all of us. The whole of Revelation is relevant to all of us. Think of it this way. What about the people in World War II? What part was relevant to them? See, in the Bible it says, blessed is he that reads the words of this prophecy. Right? So then anybody who read the words of that prophecy and kept them didn't alter anything. It was a blessing to them. Something, how can something be a blessing to anybody if it's not relevant to that person? So that means Revelation has been relevant for a long time. We just don't read that. We don't like people don't, they don't like reading that part. I've noticed that. They, they don't like reading that part. And it's okay. Because the Lord is going to establish his truth anyway. And whatever he works is going to be established, period. Right? But there you are. There you are. Oh, I missed it. I did miss it. Hey, update with the Texas border. Yes, it's a mess. The military is getting involved. It's a mess. 
Let's see. Uh, okay, that was you guys. Let me go over here. Hold on, guys. The frog spirits are old. Just so you know that, right? It is that, you know what? Lust is described as the spirit that looks like a frog that will frequently step into people, frequently, especially in this nation. And there are millions of frogs in America. We're talking about the spiritual beings, but they're getting more and more embraced. Oh, guys, let's see. Uh, what about the two witnesses? We're going to cover those in Revelation, the two witnesses, right? The two olive trees. Uh, we're going to cover those. Subjects like that with the two witnesses, um, that is uh, something that must be given in context, always in context. But I'm kind of frightened to draw that out of context. Right? Don't want to do that. How do we know that COT is getting sent? If you send a donation to COT, by way of PayPal with the COT website, you will get COT. It'll get there, right? We're going to open, I'm going to open up one other avenue officially with uh, CUT, which is uh, uh, the male side of it, okay? That would be the, the, the only other thing. Listen, guys, I have to be careful with that with, uh, uh, because of my own personal affiliation with CUT. I have to be careful with disclosing addresses and things like that. But there have been some incidences, right, with, with uh People who seek to do other people harm, they, they are just not good people, good people. So, anyhow, yeah. The, um, the official link for donations for COT is on the COT website. It's on that website, okay? I and mean, we'll have financial pages, so you'll see your amounts, you know, Post it up there. Somebody says, Mike, any updates from China core hole? That's a, that's a, that's a bad idea, China. I, you know what? That is a really bad idea. Um, my opinion, it has nothing to do with, with uh, uh, extracting energy. Nothing to do with that. Everything to do with getting below a specific barrier. But that noise is going to wake up something. Yeah, it's not going to be good either. But it will. Okay, guys, let me see where you guys were at. It's, it's the, tree for, the trees for the healing of the nations. Yes, in context, that makes perfect sense. Once you hear it in context, right? To hear something in context is to hear what's before and after it. To see where the scripture fits, how it was uh, spoken about, how it was utilized. And then most importantly, there is a spiritual understanding of it that's quite simple to see. It is uh, very simple to see. We will be going over that. We will. We will. Hey, guys, it is, let's see. Ooh, it's a long one. It's a long one there, Sister Mayor. That's a very long Explain verbal learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. That's what most people do right now. For example... There are people, Satan himself, Satan knows a lot about scripture. He can quote every scripture in the Bible, Satan can. Does he have the truth? No, he doesn't. And what is the truth? What is the truth? What is Anybody? The, the key to that truth is in the gospel. Something that people find very unpopular. It deals with Christ directly. Right? He does. This whole problem, not like your life. What is the truth of your life? Anybody? What is the truth of it? You have people out there that know every cell in the body. They know who they are. They know every bone in the body. They cannot tell you what, what the gospel is. Anyway, uh, let's see. Can you take my transition? Okay, so that one, so that one. When will the... Kitty files being worked on right now, guys. You guys will see them as they are uh, available. Now, keep in mind, listen, guys, when the KD files come out, I'm telling you right now, they, do, they, they don't agree with, uh, necessarily agree with people. They don't do that. This is an effort to 
to give you guys, to arm you guys with what uh, has already been dealt with and will be dealt with, um, you know, then from times down to answer certain things. Um, because people have questions, right? You're being there to cover that, certain systems, certain ways of operation, all sorts of things. Some of this interesting is doing AK, which your life is all about. Your life is a process. And with your life, you're choosing every single day. With your life, with what you do, you're choosing every single day what your true answer is. You guys, that's it. Listen. Do me a favor. Somebody do me a favor. Some of the questions that I left over, we have in the logs, but you guys are asking some pretty good ones, right? Now, no, I don't want to fatigue my voice because I want to be able to talk tomorrow. So bring some of these questions to the uh, table tomorrow. I, I will tell you this. So with all these uh, questions, I will tell you this. There's a type of rising in the earth right now. It's getting worse. It is. It's trying to become far worse than anticipated, desperate, even, right? Even for animals. It's not very safe. So I want to say God bless all of you. And we will continue this Q&A tomorrow with a, a block of uh, study in the Word of God, of course, right? Possibly a partial meeting uh, tomorrow, too. You guys, please be safe in California. Please listen listen to your local updates. Those of you in Florida, in the southern uh, states, be careful also. Be careful also. Folks, God bless each of you. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow right here at COT. Uh, I'm going to work and get some things lined out before I kind of conk out. And I have these screens are slipping, screens are jumping. The computer is compiling. Uh, certain things on the website it keeps capturing my attention. Errors are popping up, not with the website, of course, but with the uh, uh, certain services, a lot of bandwidth being used. So I'm going to complete doing that to get the shells up so we can start navigating the website in a different way and get the kiosks on uh, time to write one with another. Um, we have some serious considerations going forward. You guys are part of this. Many of you guys are going to have a front uh, this is this COT is going to be about uh, what the Lord has given you. It will be, and uh, but I will finish what the Lord has given me to accomplish. I will finish that, and then somebody else will step up to the plate, right? Hopefully, in the same spirit it was established in, with the hope of the people being the primary driver, not just a hope for the people, but a hope for the people to find Christ to be able to assist, right? Not to be compromised in any way by external sources, but be true to the word that the Lord gave us all, to be doers, hearers only. Folks, God bless you. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow right here at the Council of Time. I'll put the time, uh, let's see, I think we already have the time on the website, but I better be careful with my voice right now. It, it does go in and out. I wouldn't worry about it if I were you guys. I'm certainly not worried about it. But I'm going to get to some more of these questions. Let me see. Let me go back to the uh, well, that's not it. Tomorrow I have it scheduled at 4 p.m. That could be plus or minus 30 minutes or something like that. But uh, folks, God bless and keep all of you. Listen, save some of those questions for tomorrow. Don't forget you type them. So copy and paste them somewhere. All right? God bless you guys. May the Lord keep you all. I, I know he's going to keep you guys safe. But listen, look out for one another. And let's all do a better job, a better job of, of assisting each other with the Lord's word. Right? Get ready for meltdowns, too. Get ready for people to have meltdowns. Get ready for that because you never knew who it's going to be. It will be, uh, see, the whole world is watching what we're doing. It will affect everything. It will. All right, guys. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. God bless and keep you. I'll see you guys next time right here at the Council of Time. God bless. <laughs>